would occur. Coming up next, Judo, a film from China that has received an Oscar nomination, but the Chinese government doesn't want anyone to see it. Called Judo, that is caught up in a big controversy. After winning a top prize for its director at the Cannes Film Festival this past year, it received an Oscar nomination as Best Foreign Language Film, but the Chinese government doesn't want the picture released, apparently because of its strong sexual and political theme. The story is a simple one, beautifully told, as a young man in a fabric dime mill develops a crush on his adoptive uncle's beautiful young wife. She is interested in him, too, because her rich, older husband routinely beats her. Eventually, they do have a sexual encounter in a scene that portrays sex as liberating and the old guard, the Chinese establishment, as cruel. <laughs> the young woman has a baby with this man, and in one of the film's most visually dramatic scenes, the baby boy's crying wakes up his parents. A fire in the mill has been set by the old man to destroy these lives that disgrace him. That's a terrific scene, and director Zhang Yimou has a natural flair for the dramatic image. The mill is a perfect place for this elemental drama to play itself out, a drama whose outcome, by the way, is not easy to predict. And the Chinese government may view this film as a cultural threat, but I think judo should be embraced as a badge of honor. Of all of the foreign language Oscar nominees that I've seen this year, this is the one I'd vote for. I'd pick this over um, Cyrano de Bergerac, actually. It's a very good film. I really liked it. I got into it. What I liked about it in particular was the almost Victorian sense of this uh, mill and the man who runs it and the people who work for him and the way he controls their lives. Uh, you know, there was an article in the New York Times just uh, the other day that might help suggest why the Chinese government doesn't like that. It said that Chinese people in general are extremely shy about expressing their emotions publicly, that in right. many cases they don't even like the Chinese words for uh, things like love and kiss because they sound funny in that language. They don't sound natural. And uh, in movies and books, there's very little sexual content. Uh, it's kind of a prudish society, by choice. Not from the top down, but from the bottom up. And so this movie, made by a director who's been exposed to a lot of Western films and Western values, may be seen as, uh, as quite rude in some ways because of its subject matter. Well, um, that aside, mm -hmm. for people that are going to see it in this country, I think they're going to see oh, yeah. really a major talent. Uh, when I watched this, I thought, you know, this is what I like <laughs> about the movies. I like uh, the strong yeah. visuals, mm -hmm. simple, simple stories that you... I, I'm amazed how quickly I get caught up in this sort of thing and how the Hollywood story, with, with all of its idiosyncrasies that are written in and all these high concepts, seems I so did, too. Funny. I really was absorbed. You know, one thing about this movie that we ought to mention, it's shot in color. It takes place at a dye factory. Right. And this is doubly interesting because... Several years ago, Technicolor abandoned their three-strip process where they use three different strips of film to make really beautiful color film, and they don't use it anymore. They sold one of their factories to China. This is probably the only true Technicolor film you're going to see this year. And boy, when you see those beautiful. reds and those vermilions and those colors, the yellows and so forth, they just pop out of the screen. They're just, they're almost, you can almost taste them. They're so beautiful. It is a beautiful film. Coming up next, our video picture.